Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So I had today's video topic asked as a question before and I also thought it was a good one to cover off anyway. So we'll be looking at Power Automate but this time how to store values as variables. So the particular scenario is say you want to use today's date. Uh, what you can do is you can obviously do an expression every time you wish to use today's date and obviously format it as you require. But a much easier way to do that is to calculate it once, store it as a variable, and then obviously you can recall that value anytime you wish. So to demonstrate this example, we're using a simple flow we've done in a previous video, which was to send an email every time a new file is added to SharePoint. So if you haven't seen that video, there'll be a link to it on the screen somewhere now. But uh, if you have seen the video, then obviously we'll be carrying on from where we left off. So in that flow, we only had the two steps, the acknowledge a new file being added to SharePoint and then the outlook to send the email. All we're gonna do is, and you can do this at any point, but I'm simply going to add an action in between these two current ones. So we go to add action. And simply all we're gonna search here is the word variable. And you can see there's many different options we have for managing and updating our variables. But the one I'm going to go with is, I'm, well, I'm simply gonna select variable here so we can filter to all of our options. And the particular the one we want is initialize variable. So you can sometimes defaultly think set variable is what you want, but when we're trying to set a brand new variable, then we want to use initialize variable. And you'll get the three options here. So the first thing you do is name your variable, what you wanna call it. So for me, I'm gonna call it current date, but of course you can call that whatever you wish. And then we need to define what the value is. So which is obviously the, the type, what is the data of this value? So for me, I'm just gonna simply use string because that'll work perfectly. And it's now in this value section here where I can uh, you know, perform the expression to store that variable. So for me, I'm gonna to go to the expression tab and I'm simply gonna type the word uh, format, date time, open brackets. I'll then use UTC now to uh, get the current date as of now. I'll do a comma and then within a single quote, I'm gonna do lowercase double D slash MM slash year. Uh, and then what this will do, it will get the UTC now, so it'll get me the current date and time. But then obviously by formatting the date time, it's only gonna return the date in this desired format. So you may have used, seen me use this exact expression before when we were doing this uh, this video earlier to try and get today's date. But obviously by what we're gonna do now is store it as a variable so we only have to perform the calculation once. So we'll click okay and you can see it's stored as format date time. So we can now go into our send email option here and if I scroll down slightly, you can see at the moment we'd set this up. So we've got some information about the file that's been added. And then in the subject line, we've got new file added. So obviously just to let someone know what the subject is. What I want to do though, is leave new file and added with a space at the end. And simply all I'm gonna do is add this date we've added or calculated here. All I need to do is once I've clicked in here, you can see we've got our dynamic content box and we've now got this new section called variables of which one of them is called current date. So if I select that like that, it's now going to pre present to us or insert, should I say, the date that we calculated in this previous step. The brilliance of this is, is should we want to use that anywhere else? So let's say in our actual email body down here, we also want to include that current date as well. All we need to do again is call that variable and we've now got it and we can use it as many times as we wish. Alternatively, if you're using the Power Automate desktop um, version of Power Automate, you can achieve the same thing simply by using some slightly different criteria. So if we were to look in all of our available actions, you'll see there is an option for date time, as you can see now on the left hand side. So all you need to do is you select date time, you can simply drag the current get current date time into your main here. Uh, for us, we're using current date, so you could go date only, set your time zone if you wish, and you can see now here, we've got the option of our variable. So by default, the desktop version will automatically uh, store this for a, as a variable for you, but it gives us the flexibility that we can get rid of the word time, and then we can define exactly what, what we want that to be stored as. So once that's added in there, let's just go and see if we can find an email, uh, go send email, and then in a similar fashion to our previous example in the uh, office.com version of Power Automate, if we go into our subject line, all we need to do is select the variable option down the side here, 
select our current day and select. And then of course, all we need to do now is just add our desired text either side of this variable. So let's just do a demonstration having added this in here. So we'll go into save our flow and you can see it's now saving. And then now it's done, we'll go into test, manually go test. And you can see it's now waiting for us to perform the trigger action, which is add a new file to SharePoint. So I'll go to that SharePoint list here. I'm going to do a cheat and just go into create a new Excel workbook. What you can see that is now doing for us here. So there's the book. It's been created. So if you close this tab, we can see we've got our new book here. We'll then go into our email uh, inbox and we can see we've got a new email uh, dated today. So if I click onto that, we can now see our subject says new file added and we've got today's date as desired. And then of course, we've got all our content as we had. And if you haven't seen our previous video, it's really worth watching because we also demonstrate how you can include links such as this so that when you click that link, you are taken to that newly added document. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, could you please give the video a like? It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm and to ensure that others are able to find this video. If this is your first time watching one of our videos or you've watched them in the past and you're still uh, yet to subscribe, could I also please once again ask you to hit that subscribe button and also the bell notification item, uh, item bell notification button uh, so you're notified of all of our future videos as well. So once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.